Hey everyone, welcome. We're back in the master's table. Yes, indeedy. I am so happy to be back and to spread God's word. Uh, I've been getting such great feedback uh, from you guys. It's been awesome. Uh, so, let's get right into it. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. In the book of 1 Corinthians, we can see the Apostle Paul writing to the early church about using their Christian freedom to eat meat once sacrificed in the pagan temples to false gods. This Corinthian culture was filled with pagan worship because both Greek and Roman culture was polytheistic, meaning they worshipped many different gods. Uh, they had a, a god for just about everything, including a god of war and a, a goddess of love. As much as the people of these cultures believed in the various gods, they also believed there were many evil spirits as well. They believed these evil spirits would try to make their way into the bodies of humans by attaching themselves to food prior to it being consumed. The way they uh, chose to deal with this was to offer up sacrifices to their pagan god, mostly in the form of meat. And they believed by doing this it would cleanse the meat from any evil spirit, making it clean to eat. The meat would be cut into three sections. One would be used for a burnt offering, one for the priest who would make, make that sacrifice. And a third was given back to the person who brought it uh, in to be sacrificed. And so the priests had so much meat being offered they couldn't possibly eat it all. <laughs> so they would usually sell off much of this meat in the marketplace and collect the money for themselves. There were some believers who were new in the Christian faith and they had a problem with eating this meat. Some of them uh, had lingering superstitions regarding potential evil spirits once being within the meat. And they didn't like the fact that it was, it was food once associated with another god or goddesses. And so Paul wrote to the Corinthian church to clarify some things concerning this very issue, saying, therefore, concerning the eating of these idols, uh, offering to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other god but one for even if there are so-called gods whether in heaven or on earth as there are many gods and many lords yet for us there is one god the father of whom are all things and we are for him the one lord jesus christ through whom are all things and through whom we live See, we live in a very diversified, multicultural society here in America, and therefore we will encounter many different types of people who have grown up with uniquely different beliefs. Some will even worship false gods or idols, but we must understand there is no statue, cut stone, or any fashioned piece of wood worthy of being worshipped. None of these things will ever bring anyone spiritual life. In fact, Satan will use these false pagan idols to keep people in spiritual darkness and death. Satan doesn't just use idols to deceive people. He has created cults uh, to be counterfeits of the real Christian faith. So within these cults, Satan has clever cleverly uh, crafted another version of Jesus, one lesser than what the Bible teaches. So with this in mind, it is so important for us to understand the scriptures maintained within our Bibles because they contain absolute truths that will reveal every lie. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. And that whoever believes in his only begotten son Jesus, these shall not perish, but they will have everlasting life. John 3.16. These people will have a real meaningful relationship with the one true God. And so I want you to meditate upon that truth and the truth is this and we know that the Son of God has come that's what John says goes back to that scripture verse and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life and so today let's choose to worship Jesus and guard ourselves from worshiping anything else that has been created. Let us pray. Father, thank you for showing us your truth within the Bible. 
help us understand and see all that you want us to see and know in Jesus precious name amen well that's it for this week may you continue to feast every day from the master's table <laughs>